Folks, you better buckle up. We've got a lot to talk about today. Number one, Bitcoin is booming and gearing up rapidly for a break of its all-time highs. We'll discuss why and what's going to happen and how to prepare. And then number two, we need to get into why Bitcoin miner Mara stock is heading for our long-awaited double. I did a Mara deep dive video a couple weeks ago and explained why we'd hit a new cycle high and we officially did this morning. However, we still haven't realized the full double we projected and we've got a lot of upside left, especially considering the short squeeze has just started and Mara just reported earnings a couple minutes ago and oof, oof, I gotta tell you what they said. Today, we'll discuss what's next for Mara, what's going on here, and why I'm going to have to tell you, and I'm going to have to warn you, it's time to be strategic and not greedy. And the only thing I ask before we get into it is that you hit that ravishing like button, and also don't forget to subscribe. And as always, if you're the one taking the risk, you got to be the one doing the ultimate frisk. A lot of people get real frisky without thinking about their risky, and vice versa. And also, quick plug, so right now, we are in one of the hottest markets in years, and there are tons of stocks going up every day. However, if you have a small account, you may still be finding it difficult to scale. You just don't have much purchasing power. For example, if you bought NVDA shares at the beginning of the year, they were trading at about 481 bucks, and they went up some 60% to current prices in the 780s. But how many shares could you have bought at 481 bucks a share? Not many if you have a small account. However, if you bought March 15 expiring calls at strike 700 at the same time instead, well, at the time, they were trading at around $1.35, and today, they are trading at around 92 bucks. That's a 68x and a much lower starting price. Now, keep in mind, when you're buying options, you have to buy them in contracts of 100, which covers 100 shares. So the point is, you could have bought a ton more at $1.35 times 100 than you could have bought actual shares at 481 per share, and the contracts performed way, way better anyways. This is, of course, an extreme example, but bigger picture, if you do it right with options, you get a lot more bang for your buck. Now, the reason that I bring this up is because if you want to learn options, we do have a full A through Z program on how to trade options for beginners, which we just launched a couple of months ago. But I'm very, very excited to announce that as of today, we are also adding options alerts to that program. You can now get our latest options ideas and alerts included in the membership's one-time fee. And to celebrate, we are going to do a flash sale on the program. Coupon code alerts will get you $200 off before checkout. Again, that is a one-time fee. Also, if you are already a member of ZipTrader Options, all you got to do is go to Lesson 3 titled Join Alerts, and then you can add the Discord and start getting those alerts. Looking forward to seeing you there. I'll put the link down below. Okay, let's get right into it. We'll start with Bitcoin. So Bitcoin right now is going absolutely parabolic, approaching right below all-time highs. And if it breaks said all-time highs, oof, then you're going to get a massive leg of FOMO capital pouring in. The thing is that very, very few assets ever break out into new all-time highs for the first time in years, and then just go right back down. That's not how resistance breaks work. And that's been true in the S&P 500. That's that's been true with tech stocks. That's been true with almost everything. They don't break down right afterwards. And so if Bitcoin breaks its own crucial all-time highs, you can expect it to continue booming. If it fails after a couple attempts to break that high, then you're going to start seeing big consolidation as markets give up. But I don't see that happening. Context here is key. Why is Bitcoin in the first place going up so aggressively? Well, as we've been warning about for months, it has always historically done this ahead of Bitcoin having. It tends to run up in anticipation of Bitcoin having, and then it tends to go up even more after having. And that's why people are buying hand over fist right now. And then maybe a quarter or two after you get a new high, it does tend to get into a massive crypto winter and the cycle repeats again. But Charlie, Charlie, Toe, what is the deal with Bitcoin halving? What even is it? Well, Bitcoin halving is a fundamental part of Bitcoin's protocol happening approximately every four years or more precisely every 210,000 blocks mined. It's designed to reduce the rate at which new Bitcoins are created by having the reward that miners receive for adding new blocks to the Bitcoin blockchain. When Bitcoin was first created, miners received 50 Bitcoins as a reward for mining a block. But every 210,000 blocks mined, the reward for mining a new block is cut in half. The first halving in 2012 reduced the reward from 50 to 25. The second halving in 2016 reduced it further to 12.5. And then the third halving in 2020 brought it down to 6.25. And each of these halving events resulted in new highs for Bitcoin and more momentum before and after halving. And what exactly is the purpose of this halving though, Charlie? Well, the purpose of halving is twofold. First, it controls the rate of new Bitcoins being introduced into the the system, mimicking the extraction of precious metals from the earth, which becomes, of course, harder and harder over time. This ensures that the total supply of Bitcoins approaches, but never actually reaches 21 million, which means there's a limited quantity, right? Second, by reducing the mining rewards over time, having acts as a very powerful deflationary mechanism, potentially increasing the value of Bitcoin as its scarcity increases. I wish they did this with the US dollar, but alas, money printer never turn off. Now, what's the impact of this having on miners? Well, having can impact miners' profitability since the rewards from mining new blocks are reduced. However, if the price of Bitcoin increases following a having, it can offset the reduced 
use block award by quite a lot, which I believe is the case with Mara, by the way. A bigger picture here, Bitcoin's having is programmed into its protocol by Satoshi Nakamoto, Bitcoin's creator, to ensure that Bitcoin remains a scarce and deflationary asset over time. And this is one of the reasons why cryptocurrency caught on so aggressively after Bitcoin, because this mechanism differentiates Bitcoin from fiat currencies, which can be printed in unlimited quantities by governments and central banks, which tends to lead to insane inflation. And people don't really like inflation, let me just tell you that. But Charlie, wait, I'm a little bit lost here. Why exactly is this bullish? Why is this having thing bullish for Bitcoin? Go a little bit more into this. Well, number one, I mean, you get a reduced supply. The having event directly reduces the rate at which new Bitcoins are created and released into circulation, which is deflationary. The mining reward is cut in half, effectively slowing down the rate of new supply. Number two, you get increased demand. Historically, having events have garnered significant media attention and heightened public interest in Bitcoin. This increased awareness can lead to more people buying Bitcoin, thus driving up demand. When demand increases while supply growth slows down while prices prices tend to rise. There's also, of course, the historical self-fulfilling prophecy where many investors view having events as bullish signals based on historical precedent. So they buy into the historical precedent and it makes it even more likely to come true. There's also mining economics. You see the having impacts miners quite a lot who secure the network and process transactions. The reduced block award means that miners revenue in Bitcoin terms is halved. Again, we can talk about how miners can make up for this. But quite frankly, most miners, in order to maintain profitability, they're going to have to hold on to more of their mined bitcoins in anticipation of higher prices and this can quite aggressively reduce the selling pressure from miners more miners will keep Bitcoin on their balance sheets instead of just dumping it into the supply. So even though they have half the reward, now not only do they have half the reward, but they're keeping it on their balance sheets. In summary, folks, Bitcoin halving tends to be good for the price of Bitcoin due to a combination of reduced supply growth, increased demand, speculative behavior, changes in mining economics, and the long-term deflationary aspect of Bitcoin. However, it's important to remember, of course, as always, that Bitcoin and crypto markets overall go into massive, massive crypto euphoria cycles and then crypto winters. And a lot of people will come back and say, that Bitcoin was a scam during the next crypto winter. But it's not a scam now. It's not a scam in the future. And it wasn't a scam last crypto cycle. The truth is that if you're someone randomly buying and not understanding what it is that you're buying, you're the one that is scamming yourself. So please, please, please do not, do not do that. Please do your research, understand what it is that you're looking at and understand that these things, they can run huge, but they can drop just as fast too. Okay, now it's time for Mara stock. Mara reported earnings at 5 p.m. Eastern today. And what happened? Well, this is what they said. An overall summary, the energized hash rate surged by 253% in 2023. Bitcoin production increased by 210% to a record 12,852 BTC in 2023, up from just 4,144 BTC in 2022. In terms of revenue growth, revenues jumped by 229% to a record 387.5 million in 2023 from 117.8 million in 2022. In terms of net income, well, that improved to a record 261.2 million or 1.0 six per diluted share from a net loss of 694 million the prior year in 2022. Adjusted EBITDA improved to a record 419.9 million in 2023 from a loss of 543.4 million in 2022. In terms of the balance sheet, combined unrestricted cash and cash equivalents and Bitcoin increased to 997 million as of December 31st, 2023. Debt reduction reduced by 56% to 331 million from 748 million, saving 101 million bucks in cash. In terms of efficiency and expansion, well, more improved fleet efficiency and expanded the mining portfolio to over 900 megawatts of capacity across 11 sites on three continents. My take looking at this, well, this pretty much paints the overall trend trajectory that we've been expecting. Mara Lovely Mara has simply demonstrated substantial growth and improvement in its operational and financial performance in 2023. And this is again, for 2023, we haven't even had any reports for this first quarter 2024, which we're still in, that actually saw some of the biggest bouncing back that we've seen since 2021. And in fact, we're at levels we haven't seen since 2021 in terms of Bitcoin. And with significant increases in hash rate, Bitcoin production, and revenues alongside the strong balance sheet and reduced debt, I think that Mar Lovely Mar is well positioned for continued growth and leadership in this Bitcoin mining industry. But with all this good news, why the dippy debito, Charlie Charlito? It seems like people are actually panic selling out of this right now. Well, as I said on X this morning, hours and hours before this report, I said, quote, I said, quote, Mara fans, be aware that after earnings release today, if there's anything even small that short sellers can distort with, they will. Any weakness on the report will likely be exploited and media will amplify it. More shares will 
will be dumped until the stock falls and freaks people out. We've seen tons of short squeeze stocks get dumped on 10x during reports because those are the easiest times to get a stock down. However, the overall trajectory, especially with Bitcoin pricing right now, is in my opinion upward until well after having just my two cents. And this is exactly what happened. Where was the weakness though? What were they what were they really exploiting? Well, EPS here missed by four cents. Their revenue is literally up 451% year over year, and they beat on revenue by a raw number of 11.27 million. And yet markets are dumping on it because of this little miss here, which wasn't even a big reason to buy more. A big reason to buy more is because of the massive price appreciation of Bitcoin this year and having, not because of an earnings miss in Q4 of last year when Bitcoin wasn't on such a big euphoria cycle. Markets know that most of Mars earnings opportunity happened after this report, and you're going to see in the next couple of reports that reflected, yet they are choosing to hyper-focus on this right now, and in my opinion, crafting a narrative that is going to cause a lot of people to panic sell out of this stock and provide yet another dip opportunity. But we'll see. I mean, when earnings first come out, it's hard to tell how far that earnings is going to take a stock down or how much it's going to pop a stock up, but you have to wait until those emotions die off to really get a good analysis. But Charlie, wait a second. I don't understand the argument from Mara heading into having. I thought having reduces the reward for miners. Isn't that bad for Mara? Well, no. For efficient miners like Marathon Digital Holdings, a higher Bitcoin price, which again, almost always happens due to having, can significantly improve profitability. While the reward for mining is halved, the revenue from selling mined Bitcoin at higher prices can offset the reduced reward, especially for Mara, which has invested heavily in efficient mining operations and technology. Not to mention Mara already has a ton of Bitcoin on her balance sheet, which will also appreciate if Bitcoin continues booming. But Charlie, wait a second. Why exactly is Mara specifically specifically uniquely positioned. What's the whole thesis here? Well, you see folks, Mora is targeting a significant 30% growth in its energized hash rate in 2024 with an expectation to reach 50 exa hashes in the next 18 to 24 months through acquiring two mining sites from Generate Capital, which provides a nice catalyst opportunity for markets to look forward to. But Mora also has some extreme infrastructure already set up for massive investments made the last few years. The overall expansion that Mora is planning this year and into the coming years is anticipated to notably increase Mora's Bitcoin production capacity potentially enhancing its future revenue and profitability by leaps and bounds, assuming, of course, favorable Bitcoin prices and mining difficulty rates. The company's strategic focus on expanding its mining capabilities, coupled with the overall bullish sentiments surrounding Bitcoin, positions Mara pretty favorably, in my opinion. Additionally, Mara's operation of its own self-mining pool, Mara Pool, which accounted for a significant portion of its Bitcoin production, has already been positioned to capitalize on transaction fees post-having, adding another layer of potential revenue, which is going to be a big stinking deal. More over Mora's financial strategy includes the decision to sell a portion of its Bitcoin holdings to cover expenses. A lot of Bitcoin miners don't do this, but this demonstrates a very pragmatic approach to managing operational costs and investments for future growth and shows that they're dedicated to Bitcoin. They believe in Bitcoin to their core. It's not just a company trying to get easy money so that the CEOs can dump a bunch of shares on their loyal fans. This is a company that's already reporting substantial year-over-year -year increases in Bitcoin mining production, highlighting its operational efficiency and its capability in the realm of expansion efforts and using investment capital wisely. But I want to go ahead and move on to the short squeeze setup, the squeezy McSqueezy setup. Over the last two weeks, short interest from Mara has dropped about 14% according to Ortex, which means one thing. Shorts are getting squeezed. They're getting squeezed out. It was popular to throw the buck at getting Mara down by endlessly dumping shorted shares onto the market for Mara, and that helped get Mara down quite a lot when short sellers were insisting that Bitcoin would never, never, ever, ever come back because of the crypto winter. Once again, investors were convinced and they swore that Bitcoin was a dirty scam and anything that works with Bitcoin is a fraudulent scam. And guess what? Well, short sellers made out like bandits the problem. Well, most of them didn't close their short positions. And now that Bitcoin has come back and the business model for Mora is really in high demand once again, well, they have to figure out how to close them now at massive, massive losses. And in order to close a short position, you have to buy back shares. And buying back shares when the price has already gone up three, four, five X is a big problem and contributes to a further increase. And that's that's exactly what we're seeing right now. If you look at the chart, short interest in orange increased the most when Mora was at her lowest level. So all of these shorts are now deep in the red and they need to figure out how to close out without bankrupting themselves. And it's really, really hard to. This is short squeeze 101. But overall, I mean, even without the short squeeze setup, Mora would be prone to go up quite a lot. So what's the thought process moving forward? Well, this is what I'll say. It's really, really hard to judge earning reactions regardless of what earnings actually say. It's really, really hard to judge how a stock is going to react over the coming days after the
that release. So I'd argue give Mara a couple of days to breathe. Don't gamble it. If she dips, that's an opportunity. But if she rallies, I wouldn't trust it. She needs to breathe. At some point, markets need to digest what's going on here. Bigger picture at some point, either before having, but probably after I expect Bitcoin itself to break out into a new all-time high, and that should motivate Mora to her own cycle highs. Like I said a couple of weeks ago, and like I'm saying now, this is not the highest point in the cycle that we've seen for Mora. No, no, no. Again, I could be wrong. It wouldn't be the first time I'm wrong, but just look at all of the things that are stacking up in Mora's favor. Lots of elevating factors. That's it. Let's get into the risks here. I love to focus on risks because quite frankly, even with the best analysis ever, there's a million things that could derail it. And so you have to make sure that you're aware of the risks. So of course, Mara Lovely Mara relies heavily on the volatile cryptocurrency market and again, specifically Bitcoin. Changes in Bitcoin's price drastically affect Mara's profitability. If Bitcoin does a big dump or the government decides that Bitcoin should be banned, boom, downtrend. If regulators learn that Bitcoin mining appears to release gases that kill baby kittens, if that's something that starts happening, well, my guess is that the cat lobby will push to shut down Bitcoin mining entirely, which means what? Boom, down trend. Any sort of regulatory changes targeting crypto miners or Bitcoin can have significant impacts on its operations. And of course, quite frankly, there's just always aggressive cycles with Bitcoin and Mara. So my thought process only play Mara with a tight stop loss and an acceptance that Mara, quite frankly, she's volatile. She'll tease, she'll tease, she'll squeeze, she'll tease, and so on and so forth. Future dips are all but guaranteed, but they are, in my opinion, nice opportunities to play for the next euphoria waves and outbreaks. So something to keep in mind there. Anyways, folks, that caps off today's video. Make sure to hit that ravishing like button and subscribe. Make sure to take advantage of our options program with the newly included alerts down below, and we'll see you in the next video.